Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Indiana Signature Event. Check in with one of the most unique robots that we've seen out here, 7282R, it's Ratatouille. And wow, I think the real star piece of this is showing off how a potential level three climber can happen. You gotta take a look at everything that's gone into this. We'll break it down. But there's a lot of other great elements in this robot too that uh, really applies to their functionality how they roll as well too. So we can't wait to break down their claw area they're doing, uh, potentially other aspects we're doing, some future plans as well. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Giovanni, let's start off with this lift here. I mean, it's something that we've seen so many teams uh, really aspire to, but really haven't created yet on this. I'd love to break down more about what you're doing for things and maybe some lessons learned of what you've had about this so far. Yeah, so that novel, uh, novelty aspect you mentioned is one of the main reasons we did this. Uh, because this is new territory, we don't have a lot of research to work off of. So if we're the first ones to go uh, ahead and do a tier three climb like this, then we already have a lot uh, to work off of when it comes to mobile goal scoring and stuff like that. Um, so for the future, uh, we're gonna get this working and try and really incorporate that into our strategy. How this actually works is we use a cascade lift to go up and down. And this can go from a very, very large range of motion. It can go all the way down here and even further if the table wasn't in the way. But how we actually do it is uh, we grab onto the ladder rung right here and we bring this down uh, all the way until it passes these, again, if the table wasn't in the way. Then these grab on passively again um, because the rung slips past it. We have this one-way hook design. And then we can repeat this until we're at level three. When you were uh, figuring out that you wanted to go this route, did you do uh, any sort of research or take inspiration from anything, uh, from either other robots uh, possibly out there in the past or anywhere else? So this particular climbing mechanism is definitely inspired by uh, FRC climbs. I don't remember the exact game that it was in, but there are multiple FRC games that include climbing with ladders. Uh, those are angled, so it's a little bit different, but the basic idea is still the similar. You have two sets of hooks and those can elevate your robot. Yeah, we saw in 2013, we saw the FRC game yes. where uh, we had like a pyramid aspect to it. So yes. it's really cool to see that that inspiration taken from there for sure. Uh, let's uh, talk about a few other aspects. Riley's going to be talking about your uh, claw mech, uh, what you're doing up here, and some of the strategies behind this. You know, when you look at this aspect of having a claw, a uh, little bit different to some teams who are running like an active intake or something like that. Talk to me more about what you got for a claw here. Yeah, so because of our design with the, the climb, we don't have as much space in the back of our robot for the typical intake that uses a conveyor belt system. And so we decided to use a claw, which with pneumatics closes, and we use the two half motors in the middle to move it up and down. So, uh, we use this mostly during the autonomous point of the game, and we can easily get uh, scored on mobile goals but we really like this design because it also allows us in a pickle to grab onto mobile goals and topple them over, as well as potentially score rings during a desperate part of the match in another mobile goal or even an alliance stake. Marcus, what are some other uh, match strategies that your team is uh, doing and approaching during a match? So, as said before, one of our main strategies for offense is being able to tip over mobile goals and not letting the other team get to them. Um, one another one sorry that was defense another one great defense is because of the shape of the, our climbing mechanism it's coincidentally designed to fit a mobile goal up into here that's able to it's able to rise to get a mobile goal in here and then fall back down so the it's caught in here like as a cage uh, very easy to move around with and really hard for other teams to get it out of the corner as soon as we get in there um, as said before, we have a claw on the other side, so spinning is really good for us, switching out and filling mobile goals, interacting with other teams. We have 40 RPM on 2.75 inch wheels, so we've used different strategies of moving other opponents into negative zones. 
Heston, when we were talking earlier, uh, we were think, thinking about some future plans that your team is looking at doing. I know you're looking at doing a little bit of a code switch as well, too. So talk to me more about uh, what the future looks like for your team. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is really the end of our early season. And so uh, including that is we typically take a break in competitions from uh, roughly around now to early January. And that's what, where we'll really take our chance to build a uh, version 2.0 of our robot. And it plans on really changing a lot. It'll include a lot of the uh, climbing mechanism that we still have now. Uh, that's really what our focus is. But we let, we're uh, planning on including other features of robots that are currently around now. And we're also switching our uh, programming from PID to uh, odometry. And you're looking for odometry, uh, and we were talking about, I think you were looking at going to C++ over from Python too, is that correct? Yes. So from, from your end then, um, you know, why are you looking at doing C++ in odometry in particular? Um, odometry is much faster to code and it can also be more accurate as well. Sure. Well, overall, like I said, I love the, uh, the concept of the design that's gone in this. I think there's a lot that teams can look from this and be inspired by in the future uh, as your team continues to inspire for your greatness as well too. And we can't wait to see future performances from your team. So thank you so much for taking time to show us this awesome machine. Can't wait to learn more about it. And good luck here at Course Yacht Speedway and throughout the rest of the competition season as well too. Thanks a lot, guys. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.